G'day. This particular integral uh, is certainly trigonometric and uh, we have a complication with a square root sign and it's also in fractional form. And uh, as I've said to you before in other videos, whenever you see a fraction inside an integral, one of the first things you should, be, you should check out is whether it's in it forms a logarithmic pattern. I'm fumbling over my words today. In other words, is the derivative of the bottom the same as what's on top? Now, for the moment, let's ignore the square root sign. What's the derivative of sine x squared? Well, you can do this on the side of your page. y equals sine of x squared. So the derivative would be, the derivative of sine is cos of x squared times the derivative of x squared is 2x. So this would be 2x cos x squared. You look back at your numerator and you think, my goodness, x cos x squared, x cos x squared, we do in fact have that. So our answer potentially, potentially, is going to be logarithmic. Is it? Well, let's see. It may not be. We'll, because this is getting a bit more complicated, we'll do this by substitution. So... Since we've already started here, let's, let's, just, let's use u because that's the normal thing we substitute. So du uh, dx would be that, and du would be this dx. Are you happy with that? I hope so. Let's see what the integral brings us. By the way, we don't have a 2 here. So I'm going to divide both sides of this by 2 and get du on 2 is x cos x squared dx. So now we have x cos x squared dx, x cos x squared dx. I'm going to replace all of that numerator by du on 2. And this, I'm going to replace the sine x squared with u. So it's going to be 1 on square root of u. Well, that looks a lot simpler. It's decluttered what we were looking at. This is the integral. I'm going to move the 2 out the front. It's nice to get it out of the road. This I'm going to write as u to the negative half. du. And now we can integrate. Leave the half here. The integral of this, remember, when we have a power of u or a power of x, we increase the power by 1. So minus a half plus 1 is plus a half. Sorry, I nearly wrote x there. We're using u. So it's u to the half divided by a half plus c. Now, there are a couple of ways of thinking about this. Here we have a half times this. So we've got a half times that, and we're dividing by a half as well. So a half divided by a half is 1. Uh, another way of thinking of it is a half times. Now, instead of dividing by a half, we multiply by 2 over 1. A lot of students have difficulties with fractions inside fractions. Uh, either way, a half of 2 is 1. So it's just u to the half, and u, you will remember, is this. So it's sine x squared to the power of half plus c, or if you want to write it with the radical or the third, it's sine x squared, square root of sine x squared plus c. Now, it turned out not to be logarithmic, and that's because of this square root sign. If the square root sign wasn't there, we would, in fact, have a logarithmic expression. Uh, because of the square root sign, it turned out to be something else. But recognising that we had the derivative of this on the top would have helped us understand that our substitution would work. Because we wanted that derivative to create the du. So simply observing that is helpful. But notice you can sometimes fall in the trap of thinking 
that you're hitting for a logarithm when you really aren't. I hope that's been profitable and helpful and interesting to you, and I thank you for watching.